Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now I recently did a video on Unix versus Linux and that's proving to be quite a popular video so thank you for everybody that's been watching that and sharing it on social media. But I've had some comments underneath the video where people are saying I shouldn't call it Linux, I should call it GNU slash Linux or GNU plus Linux because Linux is just a kernel. So I want to ask the question today, is Linux a kernel or an operating system or is it both? Or another way I could say it is, should you call it Linux or GNU slash Linux? Well, whichever way you put the question, please let me explain. Okay, so I want to tackle this in two ways. First, we'll look at the English language, about how we use the English language, and then let's look at some of the technical things to do with Linux and to do with the GNU project and so on. Now, one of the strengths and maybe one of the weaknesses of the English language is that you can turn nouns into verbs. For example, you might say, I'm going to Google something, and that's a verb, to Google. But actually, Google is a company, it's a noun. What we really mean is I'm going to search for something using Google's search engine. Now, of course, English professors probably hate this kind of thing, but we do it all the time. Please pass me a Kleenex. Actually, what you mean is, can you please pass me a... a paper tissue. You might say, I'm going to go and play ping pong. Well, actually, it's table tennis and ping pong is a brand of table tennis products. You might say, I'm going to use a Sharpie to write something. Well, really, Sharpie is a permanent marker and permanent markers were invented before the Sharpie brand came out. The real classic, of course, is Xerox. I'm going to Xerox something using it as a verb, to Xerox, was actually what you mean is I'm going to use a photocopier. And there are lots more examples. There's post-it notes and there's a four micro and there's styrofoam and the list goes on and on. We are so used to taking names and making them mean more than what they really mean. And this is also true with Linux. Although we haven't turned it into a verb to Linux, what we have done is extended the name of Linux, the kernel that was originally written by uh, Linus Torvilds, and we've used it to incorporate a whole bunch of Linux distributions that include various components, including the Linux kernel. And that's what I love about the English language. It is so rubbery, it is so flexible that we can do that. And of course, because it is spoken in so many nations across the world, including the United Kingdom and America and Australia and Canada and so on, that actually we do get these different nuances and variations coming up. And actually it makes the language alive and it makes the language flexible and it makes the language relevant for today. And to call the operating system Linux, not GNU slash Linux, is perfectly acceptable and there's not a problem with it. Now that was the language side of things, but what about the technical side of things? Well, let's ask ourselves a few questions. First of all, what is an operating system? Now the Oxford English Dictionary defines an operating system as the low level software that supports a computer's basic functions such as scheduling tasks and controlling peripherals. So if you take that definition, then the Linux kernel is an operating system. Now the Encyclopedia Britannica defines an operating system as this. It's a program that manages a computer's resources, especially the allocation of those resources among other programs. Typical resources include the central processing unit, computer memory, file storage, input output devices, and network connections. And again, if you use that definition, then the Linux kernel is an operating system. So when you say I'm using Linux, that's perfectly acceptable according to how the Encyclopedia Britannica defines an operating system. Maybe we shouldn't be looking to dictionaries to def make the definitions, but here's a book that really is the most important book about operating system design called Operating Systems, Internals and Design Principles by William Stallings. Now, if you do any kind of computer science course at university, this book is a must read. Now, Stallings defines an operating system like this. An operating system uses the hardware resources of one or more processors to provide a set of services to system users. The OS also manages memory and I.O. devices on behalf of its users. So this is the first time where we get the idea of a user of an operating system. The operating system is the software and there are people that use the operating system to perform certain tasks. And that does imply a user interface, a way in which the user interacts with the operating system. Now Stallings goes on further to say really there are three ways that you should look at an operating system. One is from the user's point of view, one is from the uh, OS's point of view, and one is from an upgrade point of view. 
Now, when you look at it from a user's point of view, there has to be a set of services and programs that are provided to the user. That implies a user interface, whether that's a command line, or it's got something with a mouse and windows, whether it's a button you press on some kind of embedded system, there has to be a way of interacting with users. And the second thing is the OS is responsible for all those resource allocations. Its main job is to actually make sure that everything can happen and there's enough space and there's enough memory and there's enough scheduling time to do all those things. And the third key characteristic of an operating system is that it can be upgraded to support new hardware, new uh, services, and of course to fix bugs. So when you look at the Linux kernel, is it an operating system in terms of its resource manager? Absolutely it is. Is it an operating system in terms of that it can be upgraded to support new services and uh, bug fixes? Absolutely it is. Is it an operating system in terms of that it provides a native user interface? No, it isn't. So out of the three definitions given by Stallings, two of them are fulfilled by the Linux kernel. And that leads us onto the idea of this user interface or user land tools, user space tools. And where the GNU project comes into this is that it provides some user land tools so there can be some interaction between the user and the kernel. So for example, you get GCC, which is the compiler. There's the C runtime library provided by GNU. And most popular or most visible, of course, is the bash shell. That shell you get when you open up a command line window on many Linux distributions. And it's true to say without those, uh, interacting with a Linux kernel would be very difficult. But here's the point you see. There are lots and lots of ways of doing those same things without using GNU tools. For example, if you don't want to use GNOME, you can use KDE. That's a completely different project that isn't provided by the uh, GNU Foundation. If you don't want to use GCC, well, another popular one today is the LLVM or the CLang compiler, which is a completely separate thing to GCC. Even the kernel itself has a different runtime library. It doesn't use the GNU runtime library, so that's only used for when you're running uh, user land programs. For example, if you install Alpine Linux, which is a Linux distribution designed for embedded systems, you won't find any GNU tools whatsoever. It uses BusyBox as its shell, which doesn't come from GNU. It uses OpenRC as its init process, which doesn't come from GNU. And it uses uclibc as its C runtime library, and that doesn't come from GNU. Now, specifically, of course, this is designed for embedded systems, but it is a fully working Linux distribution using a Linux kernel for embedded systems, but it doesn't use GNU. So you can't call it GNU slash Linux. It's Linux in an embedded environment using tools from all over the place. And then if you expand the sphere of what is an OS even wider to include web servers and databases and things like that, and of course you've got PHP as a scripting language, you've got MySQL as a database, you've got sort of Apache's web server as the web server, and none of these things come from the GNU foundations. And then of course you can look at Google, they provide us with Android. I've got a whole video which you can find up here about is Android really just Linux? And then of course there are things like Chrome and there's Firefox and there's OpenOffice and all all these tools that we use every day that make up part of a modern operating system to be fully usable on a desktop or on a laptop okay and they don't use very many GNU tools they use some absolutely they do but to try to say that it's exclusively a GNU thing really is just a, a full misinformation it's just not true so where does this idea of GNU slash Linux come from? Well, surprise, surprise, it of course comes from the GNU project itself because they're the ones that want to try to push this idea. And they're doing it for two main reasons. So the first reason is, is that the GNU project has actually taken all the ideas from the Unix philosophy and made them their own. And therefore they say any system that's using their tools with a kernel like the Linux kernel is a GNU system. It's not really, it's a Unix-like system. And I don't think it's fair that the GNU project can steal everything to say, if it looks like Unix, it must be GNU, and just depends on what kernel you're using. That's absolutely not true at all. And the second argument is if you use the word GNU slash Linux, then actually you're reminding people about free software. And that is slightly a valid point because Linux is itself licensed under the GNU public license, the GPL. And so if you are reminding people that it's GNU slash Linux, you're reminding people that it is free software but basically that's just free advertising they want everybody to advertise their project and their foundation by using their name every time you use the word Linux and of course clearly we just can't do that so here is a quote from Linus himself when he was asked about his opinion on GNU slash Linux rather than just Linux well I think it's justified but it's justified if you actually make a GNU distribution of Linux 
the same way that I think Red Hat Linux is fine, or SUSE Linux is fine, or Debian Linux is fine. Because if you actually make your own distribution of Linux, you get to name it whatever you want. But calling general Linux GNU Linux, I think is just ridiculous. So my call to all of this, will you just stop calling it GNU slash Linux? It's Linux. Okay, Linux is a kernel but it's also an operating system. And it's an operating system in the sense that it's a kernel that ships on everything from Raspberry Pis to kind of desktop PCs, right up to mainframe servers. It's used in supercomputers. It's the same source code that's used in all those kernels. And then built around that, there are a set of tools that you need to interact with that kernel. And some of those tools come from GNU. Some of those tools come from completely other places. So you don't have to just give all of the credit to GNU. We should be giving the credit to everybody. And as a kind of a, a universal name for that whole system, we call it Linux. It's as simple as that. And it's not a problem. My name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this on social media. And you can go down the comments below and tell me what you think. And I'll read. I don't know whether I'll reply to everything because some people do get quite hot-headed about this, but if there's some interesting points, I'll be happy to reply. Okay, well, that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.